Gary Sanford. Thanks for your interest in my slow speed cycling seminar. This video is intended to give you a little more control of your motorcycle at slow speed situations. Every ride begins and ends in a parking lot and generally has some slow speed traffic situations in between. With a little practice, you'll be able to handle your motorcycle a little better in these situations. Your personal riding education should be a never ending process. Every time I ride, I practice my slow speed control, and I hope you will too. I also encourage you to take an experienced rider course every year. If you've never taken one, it can help you more than you can imagine. As they say in the MSF, the more you know, the better it gets. Most of you won't be able to use these techniques that I'm about to show you right away. The techniques work, but I can't make them work for you. It will require a lot of practice by you to make them work. If there's one key word associated with riding slowly with control, it's smooth. In the MSF course, we learn there are four key words associated with curves. Slow, look, lean, roll. The perfect speed for entering a curve is one that allows you to roll on the throttle throughout the curve. The reason for that is that it stabilizes the motorcycle, makes it smooth. And smooth is a key factor for riding slowly with control. Another very important thing to consider is you must look where you want to go. In a turn, you must look to the exit of the turn. This is very important at slow speed. You must turn your head and look in the direction you want to go. Co-riders, you must also look in the direction of the turn. Most training centers offer the ERC 2 up. I highly recommend it. The next thing I want to talk about is the controls of the motorcycle and, and basically the handlebars. The way the handlebars come adjusted from the factory is they're generally set too high. The 1500 Goldwing has quite a bit of adjustability in the handlebars as far as being up or down. There are four bolts that hold the handlebars to the steering stem that are underneath the switch cover. By removing the switch cover, and the small cover that covers the handlebars, you gain access to those four bolts. If you've been riding for about 45 minutes and you notice that there's a pain between your shoulder blades, generally means your handlebars are too high. They're not comfortable. Lowering the handlebars will help that considerably and also gain you a good bit of control over the motorcycle. I've noticed that generally when the handlebars are in a good position for the rider. The forearm is in a level position. Sit on your motorcycle on the center stand, relax your shoulders, and then look to see the position of your forearms. They should be basically level with the ground. If they're not, if they're kind of up like that, your handlebars are too high. Loosen those four bolts and then position the handlebars to where they feel comfortable and, and your forearms are basically level. After you adjust it, Turn the handlebars to make sure you don't have any conflict with the mirrors or the windshield. Make sure that you've got a clear path from side to side. You can get them too low where you'll lose a little control and you can conflict with your legs or other parts of the motorcycle. If you're not comfortable with doing your own work, get your mechanic to help you out with this adjustment. The next control I want to talk about is the throttle. Generally when the motorcycle is produced, there's a lot of slack in the throttle cables and you've got a lot of slack in your throttle right here. Now mine is adjusted pretty good where I have very little slack. That's free play in there before the throttle actually starts opening. The throttle cable right here has an adjustment under the sleeve and you can adjust this and take the slack out of it. Now you've got to be careful not to get, take all the slack out or your throttle will bind. You should be able to open the throttle and release it and let it snap back. If it doesn't, it's binding and you've got the cable too tight. Now once again, if you're not comfortable doing this yourself or you're not mechanically inclined, get your mechanic to do this for you. He knows how to do it. Just get a little bit of slack in there and it'll be much easier to control your motorcycle.
The rider basically has three points of contact with which he controls the motorcycle. The hand grips on the handlebars, the foot pegs for the feet, and of course the seat. The handlebars control the directional steering of the motorcycle. The foot pegs and feet give you stability, and it's important to keep your feet on the foot pegs, especially at slow speed. If you don't, you lose stability. And then there's the seat. You'll be surprised at how much control you have of the motorcycle, especially at slow speeds, using the seat. I can get the motorcycle rocking and control it very well just using the seat. At slow speeds, you can use body English through the seat to fine tune your directional control. This is the part of the seminar where I show you the techniques that you'll be using to control your motorcycle at slow speed. Remember we said that smooth is the key. You've got too much power available in first gear to use your throttle to control your speed. So you've got to use the rear brake, not the front brake, the rear brake. Now I'm going to be using just a slight amount of throttle, just enough to let me travel the speed that I want to maneuver with. And I'm going to use the rear brake to control my speed. I give it a little brake and it pulls me into the turn. I let go and it pulls me out. Brake pulls you in. Less brake pulls you out. Remember you want to look where you want to go. Look to the exit of the turn. Slight amount of throttle. Control your speed with the rear brake. If you've got too much throttle, it's going to require too much brake and it's going to sound like this. You can hear the engine straining against the brakes. Too much throttle requires too much brake. Slight amount of throttle and that lets you use just a slight amount of brake. Now if you start to fall into the turn, you're going to fall over, let go of the brake and it'll pull you out. Look where you want to go. Locked throttle, lock it in place with your wrist and use your brakes to control your speed. When you're turning you can also use a technique called counterbalancing where you can sit over on the side of the motorcycle on the outside of the turn and you've got a lot more control of the motorcycle when you're sitting on top of it like this. Once again, I'm using a locked throttle and I'm controlling my speed with the rear brake, but I'm sitting on top of the motorcycle. Makes that slow speed turning a lot easier to do. If you change your turn, move over to the top side of the bike. Look where you want to go, slight amount of throttle, easy smooth braking. Now if you have to go slower than what you can run at a small amount of throttle, you want to, the technique is to still use a small amount of throttle, lock it in place with the wrist, and use just a little bit of clutch to where it'll slip. Still you're going to control your speed with the brake, but you have enough clutch out where it will pull the motorcycle, but not enough to where it won't let you stop. So I can almost stop, I can let go of the brake, and I've got enough clutch to pull me out. I've got locked throttle and locked clutch, controlling my speed with the rear brake, looking where I want to go. Now using the same technique in a straight line, this is where that body English through the seat comes into play I was telling you about. Once again, locked throttle, locked clutch will allow it to slip. I'm using my brakes, and this is where I'm moving in the seat using body English to help control my balance. Remember to look where you want to go, small amount of throttle, light brake.
use counterbalancing to help you out on the, some of the smaller turns. Slipping clutch and a little bit of throttle and body English through the seat. And that's how it's done. Well, that's the seminar. I hope I've given you some good information that you can use. Remember, it's going to take a lot of practice on your part. When you practice, try to find an empty parking lot where you don't have to worry about traffic. And please don't put your co-rider on the back when you're practicing. Thanks a lot. Ride safe. Have fun.